great job of taking pictures and she done a PowerPoint presentation. Her name is Crystal. And she learned so much of Twin Stores teachings that it was so impressive. So I asked from her to share it with us and to show more people in our platform what she have done. It was uh, two churches, the Shelter Rock Church and the Three Village Church. It was from April 4 to April 14 this year and for 10 days in the country. And she will share with you about this tour. So this will be encouraging for the people who came before and who will come in the future. So I already done the interview with her and enjoy it. So we're going to put it right now. April. And she was with the Long Island churches. Two churches came together, the Rock Church and the Three Village Church. And everyone in the group was so touched and was so happy. And Crystal was very special. And she was so much taking pictures and excited during the tour. When she went back, she made a PowerPoint presentation. And she will do this with us today. Hi, Crystal. Hi, Andre. How are you? I'm great. I'm great. And thank you for doing this. And so many people from all over the world will hear about this trip and get excited to come again, too. Thank you. We appreciate that so much. Yeah, I appreciate you giving me the opportunity. We really, really, really enjoyed the trip. Everyone went, has such amazing experience. And thank you, Andre and Tony and Pastor Josh and Pastor Henry put all this together. It was amazing. That's yeah, so despite it was two, diff two churches, but the flow was so great together. And you were one of the first groups in the country. That's when the pilot program has finished and you had so much faith. Everyone had so much faith and they wanted to come. And because of that faith, they received a lot. And that was one of the top ever tours we have done in the land after the COVID. Actually, you were the first group after the COVID hit for two years. So we had so much energy, me and Tony, and together we were in that tour and we enjoyed every minute, like everyone enjoyed it. Yes. So go ahead and share with us what's, what you have done specially for everyone. You're so gifted and God is using you so much, Crystal. So thank you for yeah. sharing this with us. All right, thank you. Um, like we were so excited to go to the Holy Land because me and my husband just got married last year and we want to go to Israel as a honeymoon, but because of COVID we won. And this tour came about, Pastor Josh, who was our pastor from Shelter Rock prior, he joining Three Village Church he organized this trip and when we saw it, we just jumped on board. But then Omicron came about and um, some people backed down and me and my husband want to go because that's our dream trip for, we always wanted to go, we always wanted to experience the Holy Land. It's not that we are going to be, get closer to God. It's just to walk the step that Jesus walked. But we have a joke, Jesus walked, we drive the bus, we ride the bus, that was fun. Um, the trip, Tony and Andrea was amazing. They know the land. Um, Pastor Josh Henry was working with them too because there were only three people from our group. There were a total of 23 of us and only three people have been there. The rest of us have never been, been there. There's so much to see in Israel. Uh, we want to pack in as much as we can. And we went for 10 days, like 10 days went by so quickly visited 40 different sites. Like each site, we can only touch a little bit. Some area we spend a, a little bit more time. Like Andre and Tony mapped the trip so, flow so nicely and that we were able to see a lot. Like we only scratched the surface. Uh, only day three, most of us said this trip is already worth it. And after the 10 day, all of us said that we'll go back, definitely go back. So we flew, um, 
in. So this is our PowerPoint to give you, this is something I learned. Um, when I, when Tony introduced uh, the size of Israel, he said the size of Israel is just like the size North and South, East and West, approximately like the size of New Jersey, because we are from Long Island, we are very familiar with New Jersey. So that gives me a very good perspective. My husband is someone that he likes to know the map, know where he is. Um, but going there, hearing all this, it still make a big impact on him. Um, this map is not the current map. I like it because it has all the name very clear. The West End Party is shaking a little bit. We start, we land on uh, Tel Aviv here. The night, like we got some delay because of COVID, but God was so amazing. I'm someone that I am super nervous. I want to plan. Um, God is totally in control, everything. And he blessed us with so much and even, it was not the easiest trip because we have to get COVID tests 48 hours prior, get COVID tests in the airport when we landed in Israel and get COVID tests before we leave. Um, if anyone tests positive, like you have the chance of getting disappointed because you either couldn't go or got sick there after everyone left. And but God was so amazing. And I wasn't worried. Uh, I have so many people pray for me, my church group, my small group, uh, my friends and whoever believe in the prayer, I asked them to pray and the prayer works. So we start, just give you a highlight. We'll go through that. We'll start here. We landed in Tel Aviv um, next to the Med Mediterranean Sea. And then the day two, we drove up a little bit north. And that next day we landed, um, stay in the hotel next to the Sea of Galilee. Where Simon Peter fish and um, Jesus uh, have his ministry for three and a half years here, and then vi uh, visited the northern part of the uh, Israel, and then we drove down the King's Highway and stay in the Dead Sea area because Andre and Tony knows the tradition traditional pretty well, and knowing that. Uh, during a from sundown Friday to sundown Saturday, Jews will practice all uh, the traditional, they won't do anything. So we stay in the tourist area, enjoying the Dead Sea, flowing in the Dead Sea. And then after that, we went into Jerusalem. So that was uh, pretty much the, my husband was, um, posed us the map of Israel um, during one of the event there. So this is our tour guide, Tony and Andrea. And our amazing bus driver, Joel, like the streets in Israel are so narrow. Joel was able to navigate. Like sometimes we circle the same place three times that he was uh, doing that so we can see the place more clearly. He's amazing. And we were able to um, have the uh, uh, privilege to meet Andrea's wife, Marie. And Marie's was from the state and she was able to accommodate us uh, when we were in Jerusalem. And also I had dinner with, uh, Marie's parents and like this is a, a Tony's favorite um, things after we have a good picture we have him take the selfie so he's included in the picture so it was so much fun these are the people from three village and um we found out Mary was the oldest one from the group and I won't reveal her um age but she was a she was pretty fit fit because she does a lot of walk after she retires she's a school teacher but tyler and um laura jane and pastor josh he was one of them that organized the trips ken and lauren jim basha and daddy and then here are the people from shelter rock pastor gray uh henry and grace grace is the youngest one from this for this group like she's only 12. And me and my husband and Louis and Gloria. Louis and Gloria was the only, another two couples that been to Israel, but they went as a secular, um, went with the secular tour. So they said this trip is much better in a thousand ways. And and then Dom and Marianne, it was so fun. And Anna share here, he's still able to keep up with us and walk and um. So you can see, and then Teresa and Helen, and the last, not the least, Sally and Fred. And uh, we have people range from 12 to like 70s. And even though we been um, went to so many different places, everyone was able to keep up and uh, we were on pace and 
there's nothing that's boring throughout the whole trip. Um, so we are so excited. We got to the airport and we took good pictures. And when we got to uh, Tel Aviv Hotel, sorry, my uh, PowerPoint is blocking here. Um, Andrea and Tony arranged George from the Tel Aviv airport to meet with us. That was amazing because without him, we'll get lost. We didn't know because getting through Israel uh, custom, airport custom was a little bit more complicated than the US custom. And he was able to explain the step. We need to go through four steps and what's the first, uh, second, third, and then he was able to lead us. We land around 8.30, which is three hours delay from our original landing time. And by the time we landed, we said, there's no way we can get to the hotel before midnight. So we were prepared. And then when we get to the testing site, the, the line was long. But amazingly, everything was so efficient. And we were able to get to the hotel by 10 o'clock, like half an hour get through this um, custom, half an hour got through a uh, COVID test, and then half an hour drove to the uh, hotel. Uh, everything worked so well because Andre and Tommy planned it um, so well for us. And then I am going to, uh, so we got to the airport, we met our bus at Tony. He picked it up, up. and then the next morning uh, I woke up, I had jet lag, uh, my husband had no problem sleeping through whatever. So I went to the gym. This is the best hotel for me because the gym is amazing. I can see the city. And then uh, during the day when Tony introduced um, the city, like the three major city in Israel, uh, Jerusalem is the, the heart, um, Haifa is the brain, and then Tel Aviv is where we're staying, is the flesh uh, body, more like a Las Vegas, but you can see the city view. Look past that, you can see the Mediterranean Sea. So that was really nice for me. And first um, morning, we're able to enjoy some local uh, food. We get to get used to this. Is, um, food in this restaurant is amazing. I love um, vegetable. They have a lot of like dates and nuts and which is uh, and then eggs. That was nice. So after the breakfast, we got to tour the city of Tel Aviv. And like we said, Tel Aviv is the city of flesh and um, it's more modern. And um, the place that we went, like Jonah and Nedeva, you guys uh, probably heard Jonah refused to uh, follow God. And he was there and being swallowed by the well. And I learned like uh, people grow their orange trees in the, this little orange things. And the tree is so big. I, I In my mind, I thought that um, they probably need a little bit more uh, soil, but it was amazing how they grow. Um, this place is the statue. You can um, hear the four, three columns. The first columns is uh, Jacob's dream. You can, um, the 12 stone that they pile on top of here. And then the second one is the uh, sacrifice of Isaac. So Abraham put Isaac on top of the altar and tried to sacrifice him and God provide. And then the last one is the fall of um, Jericho. So that was our morning. And then we went to St. Peter's Church. This is something I learned. Um, uh, the Roman Emperor Constantine was the first one that um, received the Christian faith. And his mother was influenced for him. And then his mother is a, a, a woman of faith. and. And she loved to find the steps where Jesus been. And she's trying to send people around the countries and find whenever, wherever they find a place that Jesus has been and touch, she will build a church. So it's pretty accurate if you see a fancy church and, and that's um, like the first thing we learned that throughout you can see pictures that, um, that you can sh see that we're like, Jesus has been, his disciple has been, and has historical meaning for the places that you will see a Catholic church. And some of the church is amazing. Okay, after tour the city, and we drove up north, my husband put, put this together and people thought that was uh, funny. And we went to Caesarea Maritima, and this is the gateway to the um, Mediterranean, ocean next to the ocean because water good for trade that's a major trade route and like the building is amazing that the 
big stone, how heavy the stones are, how did people build these kind of theater 20,000, 30,000 years ago and is still standing. The building was a lot bigger, the theater was a lot bigger, like three, three story high, two story high. All the upper part was um, destroyed by the weather, but the seat was still standing. And some of us walked down up to the top and try to test the sound. It was amazing how they designed these. So many people trying to disprove the Bible, like the people that mentioned in the Bible is not real or is makeup. But here in this um, theater, when they excavate, when they try to reuse the stone, they found the stone has Pontius Pilate's name on it. And this is a, a replicate one. The original ones is in the Israel Museum, but you can see that it's written like Pontius Pilate. It has the name and um, able to see King Herod's uh, palace by the Mediterranean Ocean. And he, like, King likes to enjoy himself. They have fresh water pool in the ocean water. And um, the is a ruin. You can see the colonnades standing. And then Paul was kept here before he was shipped out. So like that was like, it was good for us to see, okay, Paul was captured here. Jonah was like there before he like went out with the bow. Um, after that, we drove a little bit north and we arrived. A, uh, in is the village of Nazareth and supposed to be where Jesus was born and raised um, like they said this is kind of seaside it might not be exactly where Jesus was raised but similar like his hometown is probably similar so they have like sheep this is shepherd the gay you know the, the shepherd lay down his life for his sheep so he will lay down here in the gate he was telling us that and what do they do with um, their life besides raising sheep? They have, you know, there's a lot of mountains, so they have to build tiers to grow. You can see at the top of the tier, those are um, grape uh, trees, and then they harvest the grape. Where the tour guide stands here, we got a different tour guide in the village because um, that's what they asked us, like our Tony would not be able to guide us. So they supply us with the tour guide. Where he stand is a um, place that you put grape tear, you use fruit to press, so you're not crushing the bitterness of the seed. And then the grape juice will come down here with the little things and come down to the second one. That's how they make a wine plus. This is a wine plus. Um, the amazing things that I found is olive plus. And the tour guy was telling us that when Jesus, if the night before he was betrayed, he was in the Mount of Olive. Mount of Olive means oil plus. And Jesus was going in and praying three times, each time one hour. That represents like um, connecting with the oil plus. So here you can see three big stone oil plus. Each plus is uh, an hour. The first oil plus is the best oil, you give it to the temples, and that's the best. And then the second one you use for food. And then the third one you use for lighting on the ability to be able to see that, like how it's plus and how it connecting to Jesus was praying. He went out and pray and came back, see Simon Peter and his disciple was sleeping. And he said, you cannot like stand praying with me for one hour. And that's why he was uh, so upset and he was being pressed in that garden because um, the thought of being ex um, crucified was so much on him. He was like um, human. He was both human and God at the same time. And he was sweat red, sweating blood because of being pressed. And that was like, a lot of people didn't know that. That was news to me because maybe I missed some of the sermons. And, and this is another thing that we learned. Um, the parable of the seed, the sower, you scatter seed and when they build a tier, they have to build walking path for the family to get to the tier. And this walking path that our group was walking, this is harsh soil. So some of the seed fall on the path, that's a harsh soil being stepped on, seed would not grow. Some of the seed fell on the shallow soil, which is the edge. And um, 
when um, those uh, wild uh, grass, they choke them, and then some of the seed found this good soil, then they will grow. And we are able to experience like how, when Jesus used that parable, how he connected with the people that listened to it. Another thing is that reminds me of um, Jesus cursed the fig tree and fig tree that it has to show sign of uh, fruit. And in the northern part, even in the southern part, more so in the northern part, there's so many fig trees everywhere you, you went. Even um, the Gator Hell that I showed prior, it has fig tree everywhere. Like these are little fig tree. I didn't zoom in, but you can see little figs on there, little bud there. You can see the sign of figs. And then when figs are um, uh, ripen, this is how they look like. So Jesus did not see that fig. So how do we see? And then this is uh, Mount uh, Press. I don't, I don't know how to pronounce it. Press Precipity. Um, so this is the hometown where Jesus was grew up and the people said, oh, you're just a, a carpenter's son and he's being rejected by his own people. And well, this is, might be a seaside. I think Tony said might not be exactly there, but somewhere there. Um, so from there, we went to our next step. The our bus drove a little bit north to our hotel area. And um, Israel was occupied by so many people, like the Romans, they put heavy tax on the people. As we drive along, we see so many caves um, here, little like mountain on the side of the road. People live, Israelites live in those caves because they want to escape the he heavy Romans uh, taxes. And this is the next morning. And we went to mountain of Beatitude and where Jesus gave Sermon on the Mount. And before we went, each of us was assign, assigned a little verse to remember. And some of the people figured out we were reciting the Sermon on the Mount. So as a group, we sat there, we recite and ex take it all in that Jesus was teaching all of us the Beatitude and we were able to be there. Like I mentioned, every site, like especially a, a B site, there is a, a Catholic church built by Constantine's mom or Constantine. After Mount of uh, Beatitude, we went to St. Peter's Church. So this is the Sea of Galilee. You can see the Sea of Galilee. And one fun fact was um, Israel is a tourist country. So many people like to come and absorb and experience the lands. And before COVID, so many people were going and you don't want to be in the rain when you visit all these uh, sites and everyone was praying for no rain. So the water was recessed, but very low. And, but with COVID, two years without tourism, no one's praying for no rain, the water has rise, which is a blessing because they do need those, uh, it's a big source of water for them. But anyway, at this, this is St. Peter's Church, near this spot, after Jesus resurrected, and Simon Peter, like maybe before Jesus resurrected, Simon Peter and all the disciples went back to do their own things, and Jesus resurrected, he came to the Sea of Galilee, he was growing fish, and when Simon Peter came back from Sea of Galilee with his fish bowl, Jesus um, sure said, come and have breakfast, have fish with me. Like throughout the tour, it touched people in a different way. Like this site touched a lot of people in our, uh, in our group. Like Jesus didn't come, didn't ask Simon Peter, oh, come pray. And what, why did you like, um, why did you go back? Why didn't you believe? He just asked him, come and have breakfast. And in that, he asked Peter, do you believe in me? Um, like, he asked, like, Peter three times, who I, am I? And uh, do, I, do you love me? Jesus asked Peter. If you love me, feed my sheep. So that's asking us, do I love him? If I love him, I need to feed his sheep. That's his command in that same spot. So St. Peter's Church, again, the, 
the door of the church crap out like a um the shepherd with the sheep and get jesus asked him feed my sheep and with his disciple and from St. Peter Church, we went to the marketplace where Simon Peter lived, which is not too far. You can probably see like the St. Peter Church is in this area. So we drove a little bit into the village uh, where Simon Peter lived. We'll we sit by the marketplace and Simon Peter will fish and come in and exchange fish and get what he needs for his family. And here we read about um, the scripture, like Simon Peter fishing and Jesus asked him, come follow me. And he dropped his stuff, his bow, and go follow him. And that's where it happens. And then after that, we went into the village and where Jesus, uh, Simon Peter lived. And um, here are the darker, smaller place. Those are the houses that people live. And when they have children, children get married. They build a bigger house. And the, the bigger one, that's a synagogue. And you can see the synagogue has different color. The, the lower, like things got destroyed and then build up. This is something I didn't know before here. Like we're probably on the same ground as um, where the city was built, but Israel, all the city like got destroyed. They don't fix it up. They just cover it, they cover it, and then they build things on top. Even the synagogue was built on top of the old synagogue. You can see the different color, the older color, the Turkish, um colors and then the newer colors um that's something new and that's another view of the sea of galilee like it clear up a little bit you can see the but not still not able to see the um jordan side here you can see part an outline of it but still not clear but it's not too bad and because the water was so low in the sea of galilee and the the two but brothers um who a uh, kibbutz brother who they were allowed them not Israelite people the kibbutz and I think they are the one that who build this um, um, hotels and and one day they walk by the seashore and so like this is shame form of a boat like and then when they dig it up they found like this uh, first century boat is so fragile because it's underwater they don't want to dry it out they keep have to spray water and the video shows through like the different process how they pre preserve the bowl that they are able to have it flow to the museum and like uh, Jesus in the Sea of Galilee Jesus is standing in the bowl and teach the people by the shore because people can see him that's pretty much the size and shape of the bowl that he stand on is that the actual bowl might not be but pretty close they said this is a first century bowl so give us a pretty good idea of what he was standing in I know a lot of group uh, will go in and have a boat ride in the Sea of Galilee. We did the same and we tried to catch fish, but we didn't catch fish because we didn't listen to Jesus to throw it at the other side. And after the Sea of Galilee boat ride, some of our group member got baptized in the Jordan. And this is the beginning of Jordan. Jordan has a um, river, um, gets water source from Sea of Galilee and from other uh, mountain runoff and this is the beginning and like take note that their feet you can see still see their feet so we have three girls the youngest one grace uh, was there got baptized so was Teresa and helen they gave their testimony an amazing thing was when they were there giving the testimony getting baptized a local jewish family two sisters brought their mom the mom's like 70 some years old and um the mom probably had never seen a baptism and she was up there hearing the story he was she was in tears and when we finish and we walk up and uh they like uh approach our group and talk to us said that uh, it's great that they saw a baptism and hear testimonies and our group was uh, praying for them that we were able to touch some local people um with what we did that was good so after uh, the next day we went down a little bit south of jordan uh jordan river and this is actually much closer to where jesus got baptized john the baptized uh, baptized jesus and his disciple and people still went in there and get baptized and the water is more muddy and um this river divide country of jordan you can see this side that um jordan frag um 
and on our side is the Israel uh, side, and we were able to have some picture with the Israel soldiers. They're so friendly. So they were telling us like what they have to go through to get into the military. What do they need to do? That give us um, a good perspective. Like uh, there's one stop called Mazada. That's an optional site, and I wanted to go. My husband wanted to go, but some people on the on the our group was debating is that worth to go. And this girl was telling us that um, every single Israel soldier has to walk up to Masada and the significance of it. And that inspires so many people um, from our group to go. But we'll, I'll get to that when we get there. So, and after that, we went to the town of Mary Magdalene and Mary Magdalene uh, McGill. And in around like um, 46 AD, the Roman came and went to this town and all the village and uh, Israel people just fled and they abandoned this town. And it's not a significant town for the Roman didn't bother to destroy it or keep it up there. So this town was completely ruined and no one was living in it, it covered. Um, Someone came in not long ago, maybe like uh, within 10, 15 years, they came in and tried to build a hotel here. And because there's so many historical places in Israel, they have to do a survey. And as they're doing a survey, they excavate and found this like a synagogue. So you can see that there are Jewish symbols, the color. The amazing thing was there was color in this royal color because uh, red and orange, those are popular color you can get, anyone can get, but purple and blue and it's a color so difficult to get because you get like a thousand seashells and get a, like a drop of um, a blue or purple color and they saw some royal colors like my perspective is Mary Magdalene since she's so close to Jesus after Jesus resurrected she came back to her hometown and she's someone that has significance so maybe they built a church in there and were able to get those royal colors. That's just my take. Um, I could be wrong, but um, anywhere when there's a synagogue, you have to have retro uh, bath. Retro bath, you have to have um, running water from the mountain, and then have the, the water have to have a outlet to go. So it's a uh, running water, and the water is so clear. And when they discovered this uh, retro bath, and when they excavate actually spring of water was bubbling in of our water coming in but they haven't found the outlet yet so they're using sub pump to pump the water out that was amazing so in this church here is, is a replica of a first century bowl that uh, very good so this place actually touched me uh, one of the place touched me the most some um, because this area um, was dedicated for women and they have column in the church um, showing the name of some of the women in the Bible. One of them is Mary Magdalene's and under the church uh, in the basement, there's this huge photo showing that woman's been bleeding for 12 years. She just touched Jesus um, uh, out of skirt and she was healed. And then Jesus was healing um, on the same day, healing killed that 12 year old girl that died. The father came and Jesus raised her. So there is a column that without a name, as a woman, you can put your name there. And that time I feel like I am a daughter of God. I have place in his kingdom. That was um, pretty touching for me. So after that, the next day we drove down the King's Highway we stopped in one of the, the town. This is not a biblical town. It's uh, Bashem is um, by the Jordan village, uh, Valley. And it's just a town that um, one of the Romans um, empire built. And it's pretty big. It has uh, like theaters and it has um, um, a bathhouse and and you can see that that um, is quite large. And
the town. Um, after that, we continue driving down the King's Highway down to near the Dead Sea, um, Qumran. And that's where the Dead Sea Scroll was found. And I mentioned there's so many caves in Israel because there are a lot of mountains and natural caves. And that's what the shepherd boys found the Dead Sea Scroll by accident. And that's another thing that proof the Bible is like actual, um, is true because they found the book of Isaiah in that. And to share, show like how accurate when they copy the, the Bible, we play a telephone game trying to um, uh, deliver a message from the far front to the end. And, and it's just a way that Tony wants to share, um, show a point that how accurate the Bible copy of the Bible is. And then we drive all the way down to the Dead Sea and the Dead Sea, the upper part, like where the Jordan rivers, that's kind of mud. You can see the Dead Sea mud, good for your skin, buy some too um, for uh, facial. And then Dead Sea, you can see that there's like a lower part. The latter part is the saltier part. And here's the Dead Sea and it's still very, like windstorm is still very foggy. You can see the other side, the door, Jordan side. If it's clear, you can probably see the outline of Jordan. Um, Dead Sea is shrinking, so salt um, at the edge, at the shore of the Dead Sea, and the water is beautiful, like this green because of the minerals and the salt, and it's just beautiful. And then, and one thing I didn't know, like my husband knew about the goat milk, I didn't know like uh, a land full with milk and honey in my mind, I thought it just cow milk because that's what we drink, but in Israel, it's goat milk. But honey, it's not bee honey. They don't, you know, don't see a lot of bee, but they honey. When we drove down the King's Highway, you see like millions and millions and millions of day. Like when you see, oh, that's a lot of day. And then you see some more and people climb up to those trees and get the date and, um, and they get the date honey from that. And also when Jesus came into Jerusalem, people laid down palm branches. Um, on the ground to welcome him into Jerusalem. And that's the palm, day palm branches that it's big. So kids are dragging, it's um, available in that area. So that's what they use. So you use what the local could do. And even within the mountain, remember I was talking about Northern part is so lush and green and Southern part is so dry, but you can still see the, some greenery here. And Next morning, we went like the we went to the hotel. And the next morning, we went up to um, one of um, the the cave area that where um, and Gita and Gita that, that's the hiding place of King David. So when King David was running from Saul. He came here and hid himself in a cave and Saul was tracing him and trying to follow him and went into those caves. In this area, there's source water. So there's waterfall. And then also um, you also see some um, fig tree. So he has water and, and then he has fruit. And that's where he hide himself in this area. And there's so many caves. I think we went to one of the caves. Like in my opinion, it might not be the exact cave that David was hidden because it's a little bit higher up. For King Saul to go in, he probably won't climb up a couple of big mountains to get himself into that cave. And, and that's our uh, water. And then we walked down, like even oh, the whole group was able to walk down. Mark and uh, Mary, everyone was able to walk down. So it's not a our walk and we were trying to conquer holding down those uh, rock and as people walk by. Um, from there, this is our optional stop, uh, Mazada. Remember I was sharing the two Israel soldier was sharing that when they joined the uh, Israel soldier army, everyone had to climb on Masadas and King Herod like build his palace here. You can see that this might not be a, a, a good picture, but you can see one 
three tier palace. I love this those scale model show like one tier, second tier. This is around when you can see the outline of this in the top here. And we took a cable car out. Maybe this is the reason that some people don't like to go to Masada because it's the second popular, most popular play, uh, play site that everyone go, everyone wants to go. Um, here, the zigzag route, that's how you walk up or the Israel soldier, you either walk up from this side, the other side. Um, we talked to a couple of soldiers and some of them said, like one of the boys that we met at the airport, he told us that it takes him 30 minutes to run off because he's very fit. For us tours, you can walk, it probably take you like a little bit more than an hour, hour and a half. And the cable car ride can be a long way um, when it's so popular, but we went up because of COVID, like that's God's blessing. There's no tours. And like Andrea said, we were the first tours from the US to there and we were lucked out that we didn't need to wait. And the Roman soldier before they conquered Masada, they built camp, that was the Roman camp from this uh, top. You can see that it, it just uh, has a lot of significant meaning to the a Jew that that was the last place that the Roman conquers. And um, the salad, like maybe a hundred salad was holding up that Masada with their families and children. And they didn't want to be captured, to be slave in, to Rome. So before the night before Roman soldier um, went up, they just killed their family, killed their women, killed their children and suicides. And, and the reason that is so significant to Israel was they didn't want to be um, captures or they swear to defend their lands. And that has a lot of, I think it's a good place for me. And I probably, when I go back to Israel, I probably will walk up. I want to walk up myself, take the time to walk up. So in the afternoon, we were able to spend the day there um, in the Dead Sea. And a couple of the things I want to show you, it was like, Pretty, like this was the first day we were in the Dead Sea and it was still uh, some winds, like a uh, sand storm. You couldn't see the other side of Jordan, but the next day you clear up a little bit. You can see the um, Jordan mountain here. It's, you you can't drown in the Dead Sea, because, um, but one thing be careful, don't splash because when the salt water get into your eye, it can be very irritating for 15 minutes and it's not a good feeling. You cannot swim, I try to swim because your feet cannot get down to the water. You can't swim there. Here where we stand, it was one of the extra stop that Joe took us. He said, oh, there is um, this place that a lot of people go. And we didn't know the significance. We said, oh, you can just look down at that sea. But when we were there, we saw two people and they share, this is actually sea level. We are standing on sea level, looking down that sea see how deep that sea is, how much it shrinks and is the lowest uh, sea in the, in the world. So after relaxing for two days, it's time for us to go to Jerusalem. So we ascend in, go up to Jerusalem like everybody else. Uh, they walk, we bus, and uh, able to enjoy some hospitality in the Abraham land and camel, run, camel ride, have some fun and um, there's a trick on how to get on a camel. Um, the ride was fun. I mean, we got a good pictures um, in that. And then the first place Tony took us is to the Israel Museum. I remember when we were in uh, Caesarea Maritima, we talked about uh, Pontius Pilate, the stone where he, they found the name. It's in the Israel Museum. Other like, uh, things they found is in the Israel Museum. They just put a rapid car in the place. and. This is the Israel Museum. Tony took us to look at two things. This uh, is the model of Jerusalem, which is super helpful to see like how things look like. I always enjoy those little models and um, city of, it shows the size of the city of David and the Sri Valley, the Gihon Valley is on here. And then the size of um, the temple like how big the size of temples and which is like, this is the southern side where the, um, the poor people go in, the Western wall around here, that's the closest to the Holy of Holy. And that's the marketplace where Jesus like take over the, the tables and, um, and like 
he was mad with the exchange of monies and selling things and to kind of trying to rip off the old people when they and talked about like um where in the bible jesus was like crucified on the outside of the city wall and we most people thought like that's the city wall but without knowing there are three different city wall like uh, in within jerusalem and there's an inner wall somewhere here that jesus was crucified so like it's good for me even to see the scale model like um location or whether the um temple mount versus king david where's the outside where's the valley so the other things and um also the antonia fortress like, like herod built that like everyone wants to be king like even adam and eve they want to be god knowing god and that's a human nature and he built his fortress a little bit higher than and the other thing we were there to uh, see is the shame of the book where the um that sea scroll was placed but it was a short visit but if you have time spend more time there and when we drove out to bethlehem which is controlled by the um uh, muslim uh and then we have to go out but like it's fun to see this way too and then donkey we saw a couple of donkeys and thorn remember like like people try to put like crown the thorn on jesus head and you see those are the local things that they grew there these are thorn bushes it's so pokey and, but they're flexible so that was um something and um we drove to bethlehem where jesus was born they built a church there's a big big church it's the oldest church in the world and that's the place that Jesus, uh, they believe that Jesus was born there. If it's not there, it's like somewhere near here within a mile. Uh, um, and this is a big church, but the door, they close out the part of the door and the soldiers standing there. You have to kind of, because sometimes like people ride their horses and, and things in there, not, um, not paying respect to the church so that's why they closed the door to be so tiny you have to bow to go in and there's a lot of like um christian uh, symbol and decoration like jesus was born with the saint on top so every churches they have uh it's a uh, decorated based on the event that took place and the next day we were able to go up to uh mount olive and from Mount Olive, looking at the uh, city wall and also the Temple Mount, um, that give you a clear picture. It's like West Eastern Gay, like where Jesus is supposed to go in uh, when he resurrected. The Muslim have the grave there. They thought that uh, Jesus won't walk through the the dead people, and they sealed the gate. And like Jesus, is God, he can walk through anything. And that will be that's the southern wall and we'll be there and later in this afternoon and one of the parables jesus said like don't be like those white whitewashed grave and from mount Olive, you can see all these graves that the jewish people built and that give you a, a very clear view of the the cities and how Jesus used different parables to share different stories to teach us. And I think that was amazing. And the uh, Eastern Gate was sealed. It's still sealed. And then tomorrow we'll go there and we have a better view from the inside to the outside tomorrow. And Mount of Olive. So at, from coming down to the from Mount of Olive, we went down to um uh, Garden of Gethsemane, and that's where the oil plus like these olive trees they grow like thousand two thousand years ago. Oh, and new branches will shoot out from the old branches, and this could be the garden that Jesus went and prayed. And there's the church, and all the church was decorated with beautiful olive decoration, like the door here is with olive. Uh, branches and all the ceiling the top of the ceiling all those are olive and jesus um went back play and his disciple was sleeping and this is one of the another place that touched me the most like jesus was 
the night before he was betrayed, he was sweating blood. He was being pressed three times because I recently watched another movie with my husband and uh, there's these uh, um, people being executed, electrical the next day and they gave him the last meal and, and he was just like so nervous and watching him that like Jesus experience was maybe a thousand times more because all our sins was on him. So that was really connecting to me that I was able to be there. And after that, we went to a uh, city of David and that's the room. I love the scale model. Uh, you can see the tree and we went, went to the Hezekiah's tunnels. And again, everywhere they build, they have to get water source. And then that's where the Romans like, came in from the Hezekiah's tunnels and uh, the uh, wet tunnels and dry tunnel. We went through the dry part. You can see how narrow that is. My husband like, can barely get through. And we didn't have time to walk through the long tunnel, which the water can be like thigh high. And um, walking down, we went to the saloon pool where Jesus like healed a blind man. He got the muds and spit um, on the muds and put it on his um, eye and said, go to the saloon pool and wash yourself and like touch me that Jesus healed someone that um, there. You, and everyone can hear like uh, I heard about the Western Wall. We were able to go there. Like uh, it's pretty restrict uh, in the area. Men has one side, women has another side, and you, some of the Jewish women they go in and they actually walk backward to go outside. So they don't want their back to face uh, the Holy of Holy or the Temple Mount. And uh, as a group, we had a devotional there, and where Jesus enters um, Jerusalem. And, that was good. So the next day, finally, we were able to go into the, up to the temples. And uh, the temple is controlled by Palestinian. So we have to go through the security, like a bridge and checkpoint. Couldn't get, couldn't bring your Bible and hide your cross and don't want to offend the um, Palestinian people. Um, but we were able to get there. Uh, it's like amazing because not that many tours were allowed to get up there. So we were so lucky, like again, this is the Eastern Gate, it's sealed. Like from the inside, you get a better view here. And other churches are inside um, the Temple Mount. So here's the view of the Temple and the Holy of Holy when Solomon first built it. And that's the East Gate that the priest can go in there. And this is how it looks like now with the domes and um, decorated by, like built by the Palestinian people. And, Pretty restrict when we were there. You couldn't, a uh, woman has to cover your head and you couldn't say anything Christian. And Tony and Andrea did good, they remind you. Um, so, not to. So, here is the pool with five colonnades. Like, remember the paralyzed guys that he laying by the pool there for many years trying to get down to the pool to be healed. And this is another place touch a lot of people actually seeing where the pool is and Jesus like walk up to the, the paralyzed guy. Do you want to be healed? Get up and walk. And another thing interesting I mentioned about like city in Israel, which is built on top, like see how, how low the pool is and how high this city is. Everywhere we walk, the old city is like 15 feet below. And I was, it's just amazing. How did they get all this stone to build a city 15 feet high on stone? It's, it's amazing. You, um, it's hard to believe, but seeing the pool here, it helped me visualize. And um, in the Bible, in John 5, I think, it, Peter um, mentioned that the pool with five colony, like, Usually pool is four colonies and just a square. But when they first excavate, they found four colonies that either like, they're wrong, the Bible is wrong. But when they further excavate, they found this is a double pool. So there's a, an extra colony in the middle between the two pools. That's why it's a five colonies. And when they further excavate, they found like the water can leap out there. And that's the reason that the water, when water come in from the outside, it stirred up the water. People thought, oh, the angels stirred the water. 
um, so my husband was one of them was I kind of have deep thought when when he was there that touched him um, quite a bit. So after that, we went um, walk the road of um, the Rosa, like um, Catholic, like have this 14 station where Jesus was being judged and put on the cross, carry the cross. He meet a woman, he meets his mothers. And so we just like walk through those steps. It's, it's hard, like your heart's heavy when you walk through, when I walk through this and that Jesus carry his cross and being uh, going to the place that he's being crucified. And um, this is one of the steps that he was carrying the cross. And one thing we found that in the old time when um, the criminal was being crucified, they only carry the horizontal bar, the cross that I didn't know. Like nowadays, the whole cross to just make it look better. So here's station six, right? Jesus met someone I forgot who he met. And this is station seven, Jesus fell down. And station nine. So we finally get to the um, Holy Sepulchre Church. And it has like, because so many religions are claiming this is their religions or their churches, inside churches. We have to go through that. Um, but when we get to the top, like here's the uh, top of Golgotha. They build a box so you can uh, look down and uh, lower down and touch the top of Golgotha. Again, like this might be a very popular place that you have to wait for two hours to touch that stone, but we only waited for five minutes, um, which is, um, and here's probably where they put the cross that Jesus was being crucified and they built us like decoration there. Near that, there is a cave and um, they believe that Jesus might be put in there. Um, Joseph tombs and some of us might think this might not be because why would a rich guy get a tomb next to a crucifixion place? And but there are tombs are very very popular, very like common. You see a lot of tombs. And later on, we went to a garden of tomb. That's a good replica of like the tomb. There's a longer side you put guys in there, and then a shorter side for a woman shorter. And then people put in tombs and in bomb for a couple of years and their loved one will come and collect their bone here on the side here is like bone boxes that was built to the knee lengths of their body and they go um they go in and collect the bones and then they put their bone party in the middle so um uh, one of the tomb was in the Nazareth village they um uh, resemble like build this tombs with the stone the stone like can roll cover and open and then these are just tomb on, uh, tombs on the side of the road that we saw when our bus was driving. So tomb was really popular. So and late in the afternoon, we were in the market. So that's how the market looks like. And um, that's the Zion Gate, like um, uh, 1967 when Israel was preparing to um, take back Jerusalem. That's the gate that they they went through and got in and you see the machine guns, um, like how strong those stones are, but machine gun is pretty powerful. They were able to break through this gate and got in and uh, took, back, took back part of Jerusalem. And Jaffa Gate, that's the last date. Um, we were in Israel, we went over there and um, the Christian church, I think it's a Christian church that Andrea and Tony volunteered us the, the oldest Christian church in Jerusalem uh, across from the Jaffa Gate, the Tower of David. And I was like, when we were walking, we saw this like old machine that lifting the um, stone. Like how do they build all those like, buildings with such a big stone? That's the equipment that they use and which was fun. We went to an underground tunnel and um, like that's, People said that like this, the Western Wall is closer to the Holy Holy. They thought like this underground is actually even closer. Um, so like we had a lot of fun uh, with our group. Our whole group found so well between the two churches. We didn't know each other. Like even with the same church, we, because we have three campuses, a lot of us do not know each other going in, but it was a great group of uh, people that went together. But one of the amazing thing was I went 
to just look at places. That's in my mind. But actually, throughout the trip, Pastor Josh and Tony, Andrea arranged like different people to come share the testimony, local people. One well, first group was Young Life when we were up in the Sea of Galilee. Yael from Young Life came and one of the things he said was, you guys came actually inspire us, lift us up because we haven't seen Christian for two years. And being a Christian in Israel is really, really difficult life because you're hated by the Muslim, you're hated by the Jew, you are the small, small, small minority, like less than 1%. And like, I, I couldn't imagine I lived there because we heard about a lot of persecution of Christian around the world, but being there, listening to their testimony really inspired me that we are going there. I, I have no expectation to just like see where Jesus walked because I want to bring the Bible to life. And without knowing that we are going there actually inspired the local people and why I was in tears and because the last few years has not been easy. So when we were in Jerusalem, um, Parent Circle also came to share the story. Parent Circle is um, mixed with like parents um, lost their loved one. Like uh, a woman lost her son from tear gas of the Israelite people. Like she's a Muslim woman. And then a Jewish guy lost her daughters from to a suicide bombing in Israel. They just want to come together and promote peace and share their story. Like they just want peace. And hearing their story was touching in the last day before we left. Andrea and Marie came to share their story as a Christian living in Jerusalem. Like their life. And Andrea wrote this book and my husband um, got this book and he actually someone um, gave us this book and I actually got one for my son to read and share their their, their um, life in living in Jerusalem. So that's I think that's the bigger takeaway for me that I was um, really touched by the story and I not don't not only want to go back to visit the place because when I came back my friend was sharing that she actually was able to take a couple hours to walk the city wall we didn't have that but like next time I go I want to do some of those walk from um, Bethlehem walk up to Jerusalem and we took a lot of bus right Jesus walk when Jesus walk we bus and I want to be able to slow down and walk some of those places like Masada I want to walk on Masada I want to walk the Jerusalem I want to hear the story I want to be able to encourage others and the reason I want to share like the reason I put this PowerPoint together is it's hard to explain the trip like we can show photos but I thought like how easy is it I put it together so this is our trips and this is what touched me and I put this story together and share on um, my Google Drive with my friends or um, people that went to Israel and they can share utilize this share and at their things but it's amazing trip i don't have a lot of trip that i said that i will go back again but like we definitely will go back one day so that's pretty much the whole trip andrea this is amazing i am impressed how you remember all of that did you take notes during the trip um we took no you gave us that journal uh yeah. that is how but Actually, I copied Dottie's note a lot. She was really good at taking notes, but I didn't take a lot of pictures. Actually, my husband, you know, he has that camera. He took a lot of pictures and some people would take pictures uh, like um, Gloria's and her husband and um, Dom. They took pictures and they shared with the group. Remember we were sharing on the bus and actually I was the one that taking videos, but I took all these pictures from other people and the notebook you gave really helped. I was able to follow that. And yeah, and I did it right away when I came back. So because it's still fresh and yeah, it was like a couple of nights of a long nights. So I, because I'm someone, I want to get things done. <laughs> That's amazing. That's amazing. I'm so happy that uh, you were able to put all of this together. And many people will be hearing this 
and hearing what you were sharing and on podcast and also many people would see it also in different platforms of twin stores crystal yeah. this is really amazing i'm so encouraged that people remember all of this information and also it's not only about the information i can see that your life has been touched and that from the people you met like the young life like the parent circle and you did not only visit the dead stones you visited the living stones too so your eyes were opened to so much depth of the scripture so that what counts and i pray one day you're gonna come again with rob and <laughs> and be a tour leader and bring groups and explain for them what you see like you're saying so you never know what's gonna happen Mm -hmm. Yeah, like we heard, we saw PowerPoint, Pastor Steve have went to Israel four times before we went. He put a PowerPoint together, but it's different when you are there Correct. versus listening to someone. Like it's a um, hundred times better when you are, you are there. So like I said, there are not that many places we'll go back, but Israel is definitely a place. Like we only touch the surface. Correct. There's definitely more to see. There are things that like you guys are great to able to customize different tours with different needs and group can work with you. That's great. Yeah. Thank you for all you do. Thank you for sharing the story. Thank you for uh, continuing to live there, even though your life is hard to share the land, share your passion and, and encourage more people to promote peace exactly sure crystal thank you so much and this is what keep us going to see people yep. sharing like this about the land yep. so thank you so much and god bless your heart yeah you're welcome thank you for giving me the opportunity to share this is amazing to be able to just like share like we we share with so many of our friends when we came back we organized uh, a night like our friend would come to our house we share this powerpoint with them and when we meet our friends at church or go out, we share with them. Yeah, we we just love, have such a great experience. Thank you everyone for joining us on Zoom, on Facebook and on YouTube. And I hope you enjoyed. Thank you, Thank you everyone. Thank you. Thank you. Thank you.